This is not a joke, a brand new Chloran team has been discovered that features the use of none other than everyone's worst 50-50 loss nightmare, Chi Chi. This team was invented by Chinese content creators and then recently popularized by Jamie. So make sure to go check his original video. But today I wanted to go over my experience with the team and how good it was, share with you how exactly it functions, and talk about some other undiscovered Chloran teams, such as Taser with Gene, and also address some of the misconceptions and misinformation about our newest five-star Chloran. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Now, how does the Chi Chi team work? Well, first to go over the overall team, it's Clarand, Farina, Zhongli, and Chi Chi. Chi Chi is built on the either Ocean Hued Clam or Maiden's Beloved Artifact set. Ocean Hued Clam will deal physical damage and you're triggering super conduct on this team. So this damage is not negligible and it's pretty decent. Running her on Maiden's Beloved Artifact set gives your Clarand more healing bonus, which greatly contributes to her bond of life creation, which greatly contributes to her damage, the amount of skills that she can do. In fact, that's one of Chi Chi's best attributes in this team. The characters surrounded by her skill have their healing bonus increased, which by itself allows you to reduce the amount of normal attacks that it takes to max out Cloran's bond of light creation to two normal attacks instead of three, meaning you can spam her powerful skill much more often. Zhongli is obviously here to shred both physical and electro resistance and also Hydro Resistance, so that Farina's also doing damage. And Farina's here because, well, let's face it, she's the best buffer in the entire game. And she buffs both the physical damage and the electro damage of this team, and does good damage herself. Meanwhile, Clorand, obviously the star of this show, is here doing electro and physical damage. And so what do I mean by physical damage? Well, not through her normal attacks through the use of the for forgotten Skyward Blade sword. The Skyward Blade has a passive that increases her crit rate, which is not all that useful because oftentimes you're overcapping on crit rate anyways, but it also increases your attack speed, which is very relevant for Cloran because she is one of the characters that benefits the most from attack speed because of how fast her hits are and how not affected by hit lag she is, which like Claymore's, so much of their attack animation is locked in the hit lag, which when it's, it's the heavy animation, which made you feel it when she they hit an enemy, but Clorand, along with bow users that normal attack, has a very, very low amount of hit lag, meaning that she benefits more than, than other characters from attack speed increase. And finally, the blade itself deals physical damage, which brings the whole comp together in a way that means, well, it's just very, very synergistic. And yes, the blade itself does 20% of her attacks damage as physical damage. And this physical damage is boosted by Superconduct, by Zhongli's Shred, by Farina's damage increase from her damage bonus burst, damage bonus boosting burst. So overall, the team just has this crazy, weird, wacky, fun synergy and after testing it um, this team is not like one of her strongest teams but it is definitely one of the more comfy and strong teams that you can play because Zhongli just makes the team extremely comfy this this team is basically invincible Zhongli is also buffing using the tenacity of Millilith artifacts set. he buffs Clorand which is very relevant and overall yeah this team is just very consistent very fun very good especially considering you know you're using the skyward blade and you're using Chi Chi as one of your slots. And Zhang Li barely contributes any damage and honestly not a crazy amount of buffing. Like there's just not a lot of good characters that synergize with physical right now. The fact is that this team, it, it just sort of shows like the potential that Cloran herself actually has. For a little rundown on how to build each character. As I said, you want Chi Chi on either Clam or Maiden's Beloved. I don't know if I have even one Maiden's Beloved piece there or Maiden's Beloved actually really synergistic on this team. And this is an artifact you can put, if you don't have a set for some random character on your team, on your Cloran team, you can actually give this to a Cloran party member and it will actually help with Cloran's damage, which is really cool. And it makes the team more comfy. So. Definitely recommend you give it a try if you have a set of, Dam of Maiden's Beloved. Or if you want to farm some VV, it's actually not useless now, which is kind of cool. Um, for weapon, if you could get away with it, um, obviously a high base attack weapon like Mist Splitter or Aquila Favonia would be best, but I ended up going with Sacrificial Sword so that I could have full uptime on her skill because the the cool the duration and the, the cooldown is 20 seconds, which is too long for uh, for, for Cloran. So I ended up putting her... Like, the, the duration is fine, 15 seconds, but it's the cooldown. I ended up waiting for her skill for too long. Oh no, the cooldown is 30 seconds on the skill. So yeah, 
I don't know. I feel like a sacri I feel like sacrificial sword is a must unless you can somehow one rotate. Um, one rotate. Plus, you do ideally want to use Chi Chi's burst, so getting the tons of energy recharge is useful. Yeah, your base attack isn't as high as it would be, but she's still healing plenty. And you know, ideally, you do want to optimize the healing and you know level everything up. But it's still I I still preferred um, sacrificial sword. But the team's relatively untested, so maybe in the future we'll find something else. I'm pretty sure Zhong Li with tenacity is going to be the very best artifact set for him. Um, I was testing a Toma team, so it's not four piece. And then as usual, you can go with Fab Lance or Black Tassel or on Claren teams, Zhong Li actually does have some time to burst. So if you want to build Zhong Li for damage, now is your chance because Zhong Li, uh, because Claren has a bit more downtime than other characters. So bursting on Zhong Li isn't as bad as it is usually. So if you happen to have a really well built Zhong Li for damage, you can go for that. I still would go full four piece tenacity though with Staff of Homa because Claren doesn't really need a ton of energy, but on this team, you're not running a second Electro, so Fab is nice. Um, Farina is the usual build, Golden Troop, uh, and you want to get the pipe. It's the usual build. Go check out my Farina guide. And then, of course, Corrine is on the Skyward Blade. And for artifact sets, Thundering Fury does increase damage by Superconduct, but she's not really doing damage through Superconduct on this team. So you can, you can still use Thundering Fury, but I was using the Bond of Life set even though it's not my best set. My best set's actually Gladiator. Um, the old running players who have a good Gladiator set, you'll want to use Gladiator. New players, the Bond of Life set is looking like it's overall going to be her best, but it's not going to be the best for everyone. If you have a good Shimanawa set, that can work, especially if you happen to have some extra energy recharge substat. Echoes of an Offering happens to be good, as long as you have good ping. You need good ping for Clorand anyways, like not not good ping, but just not bad ping. She loses some damage if you have 200 plus ping, so... I did mention that in the pinned comment, but that's just a PSA for people still on the fence about Clorand. To get max damage, you need below 200 ping. Um, I did try the team with other units other than Chi Chi. I tried Mika here and it was slightly worse, but still doable. So if you don't have your Chi Chi, but you do have a C6 Mika, this can work. I also tried Charlotte with Thrilling Tales. Um, again, it was worse, but it did work. It felt worse than the Mika version. And I think that the biggest part of that is because Chi Chi increases the incoming healing bonus from Cloran. So Chi Chi actively is a participating part of this team. And I just think it's so epic that Cloran benefits from incoming healing bonus. Like running a different character on Maiden's beloved artifact set actively increases her damage, which is just so cool. It's not something we've ever seen in Genshin before. And I love that this cool, crazy team exists. And you could say that the team is carried by Farina, and for sure, like I see, I see, you know, I see the argument. Like the fact is, you can replace Chi Chi with Nahida and give Cloran the Iron Sting or the Umbrella Weapon, and yes, the team performs better. And this is actually one of my more preferred teams for just consistent clears. This Hyper Bloom team is very, very, very strong. And that's like I think the main one of the other main things I really wanted to talk about is for Cloran to perform very well. She doesn't need Fischl. Like this, there's this narrative going around that Cloran is like useless without Fischl and that she is just being carried by Fischl. And it's true. Cloran's best teams use Fischl, but the reality is most Electro characters' best teams need Fischl. I don't understand why the fact that a great support being the best in slot team slot for a character makes that character worse. Like, were people saying Hu Tao was bad because you needed Sing Cho? Like, no. And then when Yolan came out, it's like, okay, well now you can run Yolan or Sing Cho. And then Farina came out, it's like you can run Farina, Yolan or Sing Cho. But the fact is, we just don't have another option that does what Fischl does. If there were two more Fischls, which, like, there's effectively two more Sing Chos, right? If there were two more Fischls, then Clarend wouldn't be tied to Fischl. She'd be tied to any off-field Electro support. And before you go saying Yai is Fischl, it's, it's, it, 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 they are different. Yai takes a lot more field time, and she's just, she's not an upgrade to Fischl the way that Yolan is an upgrade to Sing Cho. And we're talking mostly about damage here. It's objective that Yolan is an upgrade to Sing Cho in terms of damage. But Yai is not necessarily an upgrade to Fischl in terms of off-field damage because of the way Fischl's kit functions. And the fact is we just don't have a 5-star Fischl. Like, we we don't. And Clorand accentuates Fischl's strengths. But okay, let's put my money, money where my mouth is. What are the other Clorand teams that don't use Fischl? Well, obviously, there's the Chi-Chi one, where Clorand brings Chi-Chi and Skyward Blade up to a level that they actually function. It's Cloran's very fast attacking speed that make Skyward Blade work. 
Otherwise, it's like Skyward Blade just doesn't do enough other than a character that attacks this fast. And then she's the one who makes Chi-Chi's healing bonus passive actually matter. Um, but the other team that doesn't need Fischl is Overload. And yeah, a lot of people don't have C6 Chevreuse. So this team is performing not at the highest level for everyone. But when they finally put Chevreuse on a banner, and it's actually criminal, and I'm super mad at Hoyoverse for not putting Chevreuse on Cloran's banner, I think people's sentiments towards this team will improve a lot. Yes, I think Fischl is overall slightly better than Kujo Sara here, but Kujo Sara is very, very good. And the team functions very, very well with Kujo Sara. I would say it's only barely worse than the official variant. In fact, it's really Toma or this last slot that holds the team back. And yes, you can use Dea here. And yes, I did try it. And, and yes, it is pretty good. It's just that Dea provides literally no buffing to the team aside from Tenacity of the Millilith, whereas Toma at least provides a 15% damage bonus at C6. And I, I should have said in my other video, if you don't have Toma C6, if you if you don't have a C4 especially, you should run Dea. Dea with Sacrificial Sword and Tenacity is better than Toma when Toma is not C4. But even his energy issues it's, that are solved at C4 you aren't the biggest deal because of how much energy Chivrus provides. So even that is not really that much better. But regardless, this last slot in the Overloaded team is sort of just a waste. Like when we get, I'm assuming, the Pyro Archon, this team is going to be so much better. It's going to be so good because Toma literally, like she doesn't need sustain on this team, right? Chivrus heals the rest of your team and Cloran heals herself. So you don't need another sustain in your team like it's nice it's comfy to use toma but she doesn't need it and bennett cloran doesn't fully utilize bennett properly her entire her kit is not max like she can't take advantage of bennett's full buff so it seems to me that once we get the pyro archon that this team is actually going to be cracked and while we're on the subject of future impact i definitely think that the chi chi team itself has a ton of potential to improve in the future Obviously, Farina is a broken character, so she probably won't improve in the future. But it's possible. I think that it's. I think that it's possible that one day Farina's slot is replaced by a really powerful character that improves physical damage somehow. But I think Zhang Li definitely has the potential to get power crept out of this this uh, this team. Like, yes, he's shredding the resistance of three different elements, which is very valuable for sure, and definitely not to be trifled with. Like, I did try replacing Zhang Li with other characters, as well as I tried to replace Chi Chi with other characters. I, I just wanted to see, like, is Chi Chi really doing something in this team? You know, what if we put, you know, Yamiko here? What if we put Fischl here? What if we put Chiori here for double Geo? And then I did the same with Zhang Li, you know, what if we put other characters here? And definitely these characters do contribute to the team, and the team feels noticeably worse when you start putting you know, Layla in this slot. It's very important to have what Zhongli has on this team. But I do think in the future that there's a proper off-field physical damage buffer. And I think it's totally possible that the physical damage buffer is an off-field DPS that does physical damage and that maybe buffs both electro and cryo damage. And in that case, Cloran's electro damage and the physical damage of the team would be buffed or shredded or resistance shredded or whatever it would happen to be. And this would also help with Eula and like Eula, Eula ride and dual carry. This would buff that as well. And Fremine, I really think that this is the way of the future for superconduct teams, like buffing both physical, cryo, and electro damage on the same team. Maybe only if those elements are are in the team. And then you replace both Farina and Zhongli with new future teams. So definitely keep an eye on this team. I think it has a lot of future potential as well as being pretty solid already. Um, the next team that doesn't use Fischl, as if three great fischl list teams wasn't enough, is Taser. So you use Farina, Yalan, and Jean, and especially if you have C2 Jean, where she increases the attack speed of your on-field character, um, this team is really, really great. You use Farina, then you use Yalan, then you use Cloran's Burst to apply Electro, swirl the Electro and Hydro with Jean, and then go ham with Cloran's skill, utilizing the attack speed of Cloran boosted by Jean. It still works if you don't have C2 Jean, of course, but C2 Jean is a very, very nice upgrade for the team. I got C2 Jean before I decided not to activate Constellations, and besides, she's a standard banner character, so it is totally possible that you have C2 Jean. You can use Sayu, you can use Shen Yun, you could use Shen Yun with Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer to boost Cloran's damage. Um, I still think, I do think C2 Jean is going to be the best, but those are all solid options that you can use. And uh, why didn't I test this team 
with my other Clorand guides. And the reality is I kind of forgot that you could use her burst as a way to set up uh, to apply Electro and then swirl with it. Like, I know that should be obvious, but when you're testing so many teams and you only have a very limited amount of time to do it, um, you don't always think of everything and some obvious things are going to slip your mind. So this one slipped my mind to be able to use Clorand's burst to apply Electro uh, for Jean to swirl. Um, I think that this team ends up being about as good as the Raiden team, if not like the Raiden Taser team, if not better. Like I think I'm personally getting faster clears with this team, like much faster clears than the Raiden Taser team. The reason why I'm going to say about as good is because Raiden provides interruption resistance. And this will be the final piece of the video and where I want to say Raiden, Raiden, a lot of Raiden's value is through her infinite interruption resistance and the comfort that that provides. Clorand is very easily prone to being staggered and being staggered is very, very bad for your DPS because she has a very short DPS window. So if you get staggered, it is, it's rough. So you either have to get good at dodging with her skill, which does not have as many invincibility frames as you wish it did, especially on the tail end of it, or you have to run a shielder. And if you run a shielder, it hurts her damage. I would, but I would say that running her with Zhongli on one of those Zhongli teams puts her about on the same level of clear times as Raiden. So yeah, I, I personally think, and, and you guys know I'm very biased. I'm very biased towards like both Raiden and Clarand. These are my two. Do both of these characters have a little blue streak in their hair? Look, Raiden has a blue streak on her left. And so does Cloran, bro. They just made the same character twice. And this is, anyways, um, both of the, these are my two favorite characters in the game. And so I'm very much biased towards both of them. So the bias pretty much cancels itself out. I don't feel like, like I like mo one more than the other in terms of design and personality and all that stuff. I like them the same. So it's just the fact that I think that Cloran is the stronger character that makes me like Cloran more because I'm just I'm just a sucker for power. You right? I'm I'm drunk. I'm drunk with power. And yeah, so if if you're if you pulled Cloran and you're upset that you know you keep getting staggered and you feel like her infusion window is short, run this team, run her run her on Thundering Fury, and then you both fix the interruption problem and you fix the uptime problem. I think fixing either one is fine. Like I personally like this team just on the bond of life set because it's much easier to get maximum uptime on your stuff when you have Zhongli shielding you and because when you're running with the other teams like this you're very prone to be staggered and you have to play very well to not be staggered and some people don't want to play very well and Clorinda is hard to play well with she doesn't really want to dash while she's in her combo like her skill is her dash and it doesn't have quite enough iframes to be the perfect option to evade. So I can understand if people want to say she's not a good character because she's hard to play. I think that's totally fair. But I don't think this idea that she relies on Fischl or that she has no good teams outside of Fischl is a very good one. Between Super Conduct with Chi Chi, between Hyper Bloom with Zhongli, between Taser with Jean, and between Overload with Sara, I think she has plenty of teams that don't rely on Fischl. And I think she has tons of future potential to get even better with Toma basically being a dead slot in this team. And at least, I don't know how other people have been feeling. I think most people just don't have C6 Chevrous that are not a whale. And I honestly, I don't think I would have got C6 Chevrous if I knew that they, she, they wouldn't put her on the Cloran or a Lakino banner. I just thought that they would for sure. So I would have been more relatable by not activating it, but I activated it. What can you do? Hopefully she'll be on Sun Banner sometime, but surely she'll be on the Pyro Archons banner, surely. But as soon as we get a character to replace Toma, like this team or this team, I think it will put her at an even better level than she is at now, which right now, like I think Lorand is on the same level as the other good DPSs. I think she's on the same level as Zhao and Wanderer and Al Haitham. If you want to argue that one of them is slightly better, I would accept it. If you want to say that Zhao is better um, than Clorand, I would totally accept it because he has longer rotations and blah, blah, blah. Sure. If you want to say the Wanderer is better because he has more bursty, blah, 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 damage. If you want to say Al Haitham's better, sure, I'll take it. But I think that they're all in Linny. I think Lenny is super cringe to play, but I think he's really good. Hu Tao, I think all of these characters are right around the same level. I would put them in the same list in the tier list and I wouldn't know how to organize them. I think they're all very, very good. Someone in the comments has been mentioning, by the way, that the Spiral Abyss right now is favoring characters that gain or lose HP. We've got the Blessing um, of the Abyssal Moon, which when a character increases or decreases HP by 16%, this effect can stack up to three times. So it's effectively a 48% damage bonus increase. 
And this is, I, I, I don't want to downplay this because this is relevant and it is applicable on the, the final floor of the Spiral Abyss. However, most teams these days will be getting some variation of this of this ability. So obviously this buffs Farina teams and it buffs Cloran teams and Arlecchino teams even if they don't have Farina. It downplays a Hytham without Farina. It downplays Navia without Farina. It downplays Ito without Farina. It downplays Wanderer without Farina. It downplays Ayaka without Farina. Um, it boosts up Novalet. It doesn't matter for Nilu. It downplays Ayata without Farina. Like it, it just further incentivizes Farina's power. But most characters, a lot of some characters like take like take their own HP anyways, like Zhao and Farina, or Zhao and Novalet and Clorand. Uh, but also some characters are just gonna get hit or take damage, like Raiden, for example. She's just gonna face tank damage, and so you're gonna get that buff anyways. And some characters will just take damage once, get a 16% increase, and then it'll only it's only a 32% damage increase. So Although I do think that it is a buff to all those teams, I think it's more of a nerf to certain teams because so many teams have that buff that it's effectively a nerf to teams that don't have Farina. And Farina is already the best character in the game, in my opinion. And from these, from these, like from this Abyssal Blessing, it's even more so. I wish we could turn off the Blessing of the Abyssal Moon. That would just be so nice if we could just turn it off to make things harder for ourselves, uh, and also just to normalize testing. That would be super, super great. Uh, oh yeah, the final thing I wanted to say is just a PSA on how broken Farina C1 is. Some people have C1 Farina, and this will increase the fanfare by a lot like a lot like 150 fanfare you're basically maxing her fanfare now on every single team and this is a huge buff and c2 is a huge buff for her personal damage very very big and this is also really big for cloran's damage and for also the physical damage if you get c1 farina you can start running an attack goblet i did test out an attack goblet by the way but it was slightly worse than electro for me but if you have C1 Farina, which the original Chinese showcase did, then that makes the team look way better than it was otherwise. C1 Farina is just insane. It makes every team look way better. So overall, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of Clorand. No, I don't think you should just pull Clorand. I don't think she's one of the strongest characters in the game, but she's a great character if you want to get her. Uh, and I do think she's underrated by the community right now. I also just want to make sure that I'm effectively communicating that I am very hyped for this character. I really like this character. I have a lot of fun playing the, this character. That's not that they're perfect. Their short up, uh, their short uptime is very, very frustrating sometimes, especially when you get knocked out. So that is a huge con. Um, she's yeah, she's 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 frustrating in that way. But I just feel like people are over are really underestimating how good she is. And if you need to underestimate her to justify skipping her. Right? If you only want to pull the top meta units and you're justifying that she's not a top meta unit to not pull her, I think that's totally fine. Right, And saying that she's barely better than Kaching is fine because the baseline reactions for Electro are very strong. So even though Kaching's kit is much weaker than Cloran's, the overall team performance is still very good for Kaching, especially Aggravate, especially Farina. I get the argument that she's not, for, for a lot of people, maybe not so good of a character that it's actively worth a five-star pull because premium currency is expensive. So the reason why I'm advocating that she's stronger than people say is not because I think she's like a must-pull, like actual meta unit. It's just because I think people are underselling her and I think people are over-accentuating her weaknesses, especially her reliance on Fischl. And they seem to think like she is a weaker DPS than a lot of the Fontaine characters. And yes, she's weaker than Arlequino and Novelette, but I think she's just as strong as every other DPS. And they have their different pros and cons and different strengths and weaknesses for different abysses. So that's my final take. Take care. Bye for now.